Right now, I'm going to show you how to retouch a portrait photograph using nothing but Lightroom or Camera Raw. Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com. Thanks for watching and this week I've got an exciting tutorial. I'm going to show you how to retouch a face that's going to be the teeth, the eyes, the skin, the hair using nothing but Lightroom or Camera Raw. Um, Lightroom and Camera Raw have exactly the same feature set so it works on both. Let's get started. All right, so we're going to use this photograph that I shot. This is straight out of the camera using a RAW file. And the beautiful model here is Lena. Thank you, Lena. And remember, it doesn't matter if you're using Lightroom Classic, a Lightroom, or Camera Raw. The adjustments, the settings are identical in all of them. I'm going to be using Lightroom Classic. All right, so what I want to do now is I'm going to zoom in on her teeth. And we can see her teeth are good, but let's make them a little bit better. So we're going to grab our adjustment brush. And this enables us to just paint in a particular area and apply those adjustments and we want to do it just on the teeth. Another great thing about this adjustment brush is there's presets here already. So if we click there and we go down we see there's a teeth whitening preset. Now remember in order to see that preset you have to have that brush selected. Then we click on teeth whitening and it does two things. It ups the exposure just a little bit to brighten it and you don't always need that sometimes you can back off on that and the other thing is it drops the saturation down significantly to get rid of any color another thing I want to do is I want to make sure auto mask is turned on that's not always necessarily on by default and by doing that now I can go over the teeth just very easily and I don't have to worry about getting the gums or the lips because we don't want to change the color of those and let's just go on that one a little bit more and if we look at this before and after, we can see, you know what, that's worked really well. All right, let's go and have a look at the eyes. So we're just going to go here to the eyes. And notice here we've got a little bit of bloodshot there. Now, we don't want to go with the full teeth whitening because we double click to reset that because you don't want to make them to look ghoulish. Um, you guys remember Stargate? Yeah, we don't want that look. So we're going to go with that saturation turned off on the same one. So basically everything is reset except the saturation is down. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to click on here. And I'm just painting right there into the bloodshot area and also in there. Now you might want to turn the auto mask off for this. And you can use the left bracket key to make that smaller. The right bracket key will make it bigger. And all we're doing is just getting rid of that color there. And why don't we do the same over here? I'm just using the space bar, by the way. We'll get the hand tool so we can move our image around. We're still zoomed in. And I'm just going to go around that edge there and get rid of that. Excellent. Now, this is pretty subtle. But if we look at it before and after, you can see what it's doing. Now, why don't we lighten up these irises a little bit? So what we're going to do here is we're going to grab another brush. And you want to grab it again. And the reason we grab it again is so that we're painting on a new region, we're creating a new brush, so we're not changing anything that we've done before. So great, so why don't we change this now, and we're going to go to the Iris Enhance. And what the Iris Enhance does, is it gives a little kick of clarity, brightens it up a little bit, and adds a little more color with the saturation. So why don't we do that, we're going to make our brush a little bigger, and just go around there. And what it's going to do is just going to put a little bit of, little bit of life into those irises. Don't go over the pupil, just the irises around the edges. Nice. All right, so if we look at this now, before, after, it's subtle. And to be honest, most of the things you're doing on retouching are going to be subtle. And I just want to mention a point here. What's okay and what's not okay to retouch. So generally speaking, it's okay to retouch things that are temporary, such as pimples, red eyes, things like that, uh, coffee stains on the teeth. These, these are not permanent things. These are temporary things, and it's okay to change those. Um, we don't want to be doing things like changing the bones, uh, the structure, things like that. Now, you know, there's all obviously ethical things like you don't want to make a person unnaturally skinny and things like that. Now, the other thing is a well-retouched photograph doesn't look like it's being retouched. 
So this is what we're going for here. So what we want to do now is I'm just going to choose fit so I can see the whole face and everything. Now we're going to get to the skin. In fact, why don't we zoom in? Notice we've got a one to one or a two to one. I want to go to a one to two so I can change it here. What that does is it just zooms me out to 50% right now. And that's good enough for me to see the areas here, the problem areas that we want to fix. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab our spot tool and we're going to use the left bracket key. So it's just a little bit bigger than these little spots here. And all I need to do is just tap on them to reduce them. And here's a little tip. When you do this, when you tap, what it does is it automatically creates a sample for you. If you don't like that sample, if you hit the forward slash key, it'll sample a different area. So if you are trying to heal something and it doesn't look right, just go there. You don't like where it is. The forward slash key will randomly select a different area to do that. All right, so let's do it just a couple more in here. All right, great. That's looking good enough. Now let's have a look at one other thing. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to tap away. And you can tap on any of these tools just to close it down and go to our basic tools. So we've got rid of that, but we've got some little creases and things like that. And a lot of that too is because of the dramatic lighting is kind of bringing that out a little bit. So a newer feature inside of Lightroom and Camera Raw is texture. And we can use negative texture to smoothen skin. And it works really well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to choose this to fit. And I'm going to grab a brush. Now what I want to do with this brush is I want to select just her face, just her skin. So I'm going to make sure auto mask is turned on. And I also want to make sure that that feather is turned all the way up. And we're going to click here to show the mask overlay. So that means now when I paint, I start to see this kind of ruby lift color. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around and select her face. Notice it's just selecting the skin. The nice thing about that auto mask, just keep that cross here within the areas you want to paint. All right. So now she's starting to look like she's got some really bad sunburn. Don't worry about that. Great. So now what we're going to do is, oh, don't forget that bit under there. So essentially we've selected all her skin on her face. Let's turn that selection off. And what we want to do is just reset everything here. So where it says effect, hold down the out or the option key and that'll turn into reset. Now that's reset it, meaning that nothing here has changed. So let's zoom in a little bit. In fact, let's go all the way up to, well, maybe the one to one. If I was on a higher resolution monitor, not the one I'm recording on, I would normally go to one to one. But just to kind of help you guys see a little easier, we're going to do the half. That's 50%. All right, all we want to do now is just take texture and you just want to push it to the left and notice what happens. Obviously, that's too far, but see what we can do. It kind of looks a little bit like frequency separation. And in fact, it does work the same way. I've got another tutorial um, and I'll link to that, which really explains this texture slider to you. Um, but essentially what it's doing is it's taking the medium frequency. So there's a high frequency, which is the very fine detail, low frequency, which are the rougher areas, you know, texture. And then in the middle is where it's working there in that kind of a middle texture or that middle frequency. But anyway, I'll, I'll link the other video. So by doing that, we can soften that skin. And let me just go to fill here. And I'm just going to click away. So that's going to apply that. And we can see, let's have a look, see where we're at now, before and after. So you can see, you know, the teeth, the skin, the eyes. One last area, and it's an area a lot of people skip sometimes. That's the hair. Fit. Lena has great hair, so she really doesn't need anything, but I'm just going to kind of show you how this works. What we're going to do is grab the brush, and now we want to go over the hair. So let's just do the same thing we did with that masking and we just want to select the hair. Now this is a great way to get rid of that stringy looking hair. Now that happens a lot in Southern California, 
because of the uh, water. The water is very harsh here. All right, so we're just going to turn this off. We can reset everything first, same way as before. And now I can take that texture slider and drop it down and look at this. See what that does? It gives it that dreamy, silky looking hair. Now, once again, you know, Lena really doesn't need it, but, um, you know, if you are working with a model that does have drier hair, this is going to give it that nice dreamy uh, look. All right. So if we look at this before and after, it's looking pretty good. One thing I might do is just pop the exposure just a little bit, just to brighten it a little bit up. So as you can see, we are able to completely retouch a face using nothing but Lightroom or Camera Raw. So I've got a question for you. What do you use? Do you use Lightroom or Camera Raw or neither? I'd love to know. Let us know in the comments underneath. If you like Photoshop and Lightroom, hit the subscribe button right now and you'll get a new video from me every week. Make sure you ring that notification bell so you know when I upload, which is usually every Tuesday. If you like this video, smash the like button into dust. Don't forget to tell your friends about it. Thanks for watching and until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.